Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. So the Japanese and the Chinese cannot enter into the congregation of the Lord. Read on. Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way. So when we came out of Egypt, they didn't meet us in the way. They didn't want to feed us because what Moses was like, Moses was saying, listen, let us go through your land. We're going to buy whatever we need to buy. We, we, we just want to get through your land. But the, Moabite, the Moabites and the Ammonites was like, nah, you can't pass through. Read on. When ye came forth out of Egypt. So read it again from the top, verse be, 4. Because they met you not with bread and water in the way. When ye came forth out of Egypt. Uh -huh. Because they hired against thee Balaam, the son of Beor of Pether, or Mesopotamia, to curse thee. So this is during the time of... When he's talking about uh, how Balaam, the son of Beor, this is in, in Numbers. Um, you had a, a witch, a Moabite, and he hired a, a witch to curse Israel. But it didn't work. Read on. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, because the Lord thy God turned... Read that again. It say, but... Nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam, but... The Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing unto thee, because the Lord thy God loved thee. Read. Thou shalt not seek their power. Excuse me. Thou shalt not seek their peace, nor their prosperity all thy days forever. So God is telling us, listen, we're not trying to be, we at war with all nations. Read that verse again. Verse 6. Thou shalt not seek their peace nor their prosperity all their days forever. So God telling us as the Israelites, listen, y'all at war with these people. Don't get it twisted. Do not get it twisted. Go to Ezekiel 25. Let's find out who they are. Ezekiel 25, start at verse 1. <laughs> the Moabites and the Ammonites. Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites. Set thy face against the Ammonites. Real quick, who is the Ammonites? Hands. Sorry, that's the Japanese. The Japanese, good. All right, go ahead. Set thy face against the Ammonites and prophesy against them. And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, Because thou sayest, Because thou sayest, Aha, against my sanctuary, When it was profane and against the land of Israel, When it was desolate, And against the house of Judah, When they went into captivity. Read, read on. Be, behold, therefore will I deliver thee to the men of the east. Therefore I will deliver thee to the men where? Of the east. Of the east. Read. For a possession, uh -huh. and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. So, it says, Behold, therefore, I will deliver thee to the men of the east. Where is Japan located today? Mm. 
Anybody know? Zuria. Isn't it in the South Pacific? Yeah, but if you was to look at a flat map, right? Yeah, just a map. East. It'd be keeping in correlation with Jerusalem. It'd be east of Jeru Jerusalem. It'd be east yes, of Jerusalem, right? That's what you want to keep it. Keep it in correlation with Jerusalem. So in correlation with Jerusalem, it would be where? East. Read that verse again. Behold, therefore will I deliver thee to the men of the east. So back then when they would take you captive, they would take you where? Wherever they was taking you to. So it says that they, was take, that they took Ammon where? To, to the, the east. To the east. So they took, and when you look at the map of Israel, Ammon was already on our east side. Moab was already on our east side. So it says it would, the men would take them further east. That's what it's getting, going into. They would take us, they would take the Ammonites further east. Go ahead. For a possession, and they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. They shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. And I will make Rabbah. That's it. Jump down to verse um, 8. Verse 8. Verse that, 7. Behold, therefore I will stretch out my hand again upon thee, and will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen. Read. And, I, and I will cut thee off from the people, and I will cause thee to perish out of the countries. Uh -huh. I will destroy thee. I will do what? I will destroy thee. Read. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Read on. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab. Because that who? Because that Moab. Who is Moab? The Chinese. The Chinese. Now it's talking about Moab. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Moab and Seir do Stop. say. Stop. Who is Seir? Is there yet the only one? No. It is what it is. Go ahead. Esau. Esau. So now it's talking. So in this one chapter, we've spoken about Ammon. We're speaking about Moab. And we're speaking about Esau. Go ahead. Because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. Uh huh. Therefore, behold, I will open the side of Moab he, from he the cities. He said, cities. I will open the side of Moab, read, from the cities, from his cities, which are on his for frontiers. Frontiers. The glory of the country, Bethshemoth, Belamin, and Kajotzerland. Is that how you pronounce it? Read on. Unto the men of the east. Unto who? Unto the men of the east. Unto the men of the east. Read. With the Ammonites. With the Ammonites. Read. And will give them in possession. Uh huh. That the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. Read. And I will execute judgments. And I will do what? I will execute judgments upon Moab. Uh huh. They shall know that I am the Lord. So God said he's going to execute judgments on Moab, on the Chinese. God said he's going to execute judgments on them. Go to Isaiah 16. Isaiah 16. So these, this corona, what everybody's scared of, that's judgment from God. Isaiah 16, start at verse 6. Isaiah chapter 16, verse 6. We have heard of the pride of Moab. They are also a prideful people. The Moabites are a very prideful people. He said what? We have heard of the pride of Moab. Uh-huh. He is very proud. He is very proud. Read. Excuse me. He is very proud, even of his haughtiness and his pride and his wrath. But his lies shall not be so. But his what? But his lies shall not be so. Do y'all know that we was in captivity under the Moabites? The Chinese had us as slaves. But you're not going to read about that in, in history or in your school. Why? Why you don't read about that? Because they made a covenant with the United States of America not to put that out. You understand what I'm saying? They don't, they don't put that out to us. So read that verse again. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud, even of his haughtiness and his pride 
and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. But his lies shall not be so. God did not forget what Moab did to us. Now he's finna pay them back. Give me that video. I didn't even send this one. I'm gonna send this one to you. Hey, wait, wait before you say that, Austin. Hey, Cause you said um, that how Moab how they hiding the history, right? Mm -hmm. That's the same thing that Esau doing right now. That's why they 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 stopping the history of the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American from their books. They slowly taking it out. So picture how much time that the the Moabites had to do the same thing. Every nation who had us in slavery, they do the same thing. Now, we only know about it because it's recent, but as time go past by, like all children, they don't even know their history anymore. And every nation do the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead, bro. Um, so that part, <clears throat> the part, it says, but his lies shall not be so. Also, when you look at what Moab does in our communities, right, they, 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 they set up these teriyaki shops and all these different little food spots and tell you you're eating chicken. The whole time you're eating rat, cat, different animals. I mean, this has been proven. There's been a whole bunch of shops throughout the United States that have gotten shut down because of stuff like that. So the lies that Moab, now that we're coming into this truth and we're starting to get the veil off our eyes, you see less and less people are dealing with Moab food. I refuse to eat it. But those are part of their lies that the Most High had to reveal and expose. Because he's keeping, the, they keep us in sin through feeding us defiled foods. Yeah, all praises, all praises. So go to, um, pull that video up, the racism in the laundry. So it says they are a prideful people. Watch what God finna show us, how they treat us in China. This is a video that came out in, I think, 2000. Pause it real quick. So this video came out in 2016. I want y'all to pay attention to it. All right, go ahead. So that is a commercial that they pushing in China. That read that verse again. Isaiah chapter sixteen verse six. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is very proud, even of his haughtiness and his pride, and his wrath, but his lies shall not be so. Go to Psalms 83, verse 1. All the stuff they've done to us in the past is coming forth. Read. Psalms chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God, hold not thy peace, uh -huh. and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. So God has enemies. Read. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. Read. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. So the enemies of God have taken crafty counsel against God's people, which is us, the Israelites. Read. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And consulted, meaning consulted together, meaning conspired against thy hidden ones. We are the hidden ones. Read. They have said... Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Read that again. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. So they came together and conspired to cut us off as a people to the point where we don't even realize who we are today. Read on. For they have consulted together with consent. They read, are, read that again. For they have consulted together with one consent. With one consent. Meaning they all came together and was like, okay, this is how we're going to cut them off from being a nation. We know that they are the children of God. We know who they are. 
But it said we got to come together to cut them off from being a nation. Read. They are confederate against thee, the tabernacles of Edom. So Edom, which is the so-called white man, that's number one. Read. And the Ishmaelites. The Ishmaelites are the Arabs. Read. Of Moab. Uh-huh. Of who? Of Moab. Of Moab. And the Hagarines. Read that again. Verse 6. The tabernacles of Edom. So Edom conspired against God. Read. And the Ishmaelites. The Arabs conspired against God. Of Moab. Moab, the Chinese. And Stop. The Give me this article. Go to um, the one I sent you where it say African and African Americans in China. A long history. Jump, go down, go down, go down. Go down to where it says, start at where it says seventh, the, since the seventh century. Right there. Read that. Can you make it bigger for um, Manasseh? Right there. Since the 7th century, Africans have maintained a consistent commercial relationship with China. During the Tang Dynasty, Arab Hold up, stop, go back up, read the article, read the stop, um, beginning of the article, so if somebody else want to read it, read that. Africans and African Americans in China, a long history, a troubled present, and a promising future. Go down. Since the 7th century, Africans have maintained a consistent commercial relationship with China. Read. During the Tang Dynasty. During the Tang Dynasty. Arab traders brought African slaves from East Africa to China. Stop. When, what is this called in history? Who knows? Do anybody know what this was called in history? Soldier. Good. The sub-Saharan slave trade. Read. Stop, though. Remember what we just read in Psalms 83. Who was against the Lord and his people? It said Edom, Ishmaelites, Moabites. Read that. They conspired one of the many commodities in the Arabs' large-scale mar maritime trade with China. So they was trading us in China. Read. During this era, the first Chinese cultural perception of African, of African people developed. These dark-skinned people were known as Kunlun. They were described as lower class. They were described as lower class. Remember we just seen in the commercial where they put us in a, um, a, a, a washing machine and, and washed us white. Read it what it said. They were what? They were described as lower class. Uh-huh. Ignorant. Ignorant. Scary. Scary. And dangerous. And dangerous. So that's the, that's the stereotype they had back then. So what you think they got of us today? The same exact thing. Read. Although there were far more enslaved Chinese, some wealthy Chinese preferred the exotic Kunlun slaves. So they had their own people enslaved, but they wealthy people wanted us. Read. African slavery in China peaked during the Tang and Song 9, 960 AD to 1279 AD dynasty but the number of uh, african slaves taken to china during this 608 year period is unclear read that again it's Af a dynasties but dynasties what? but the number of african slaves taken to china during the 608 year period is unclear so for 608 years these people had us as slaves we don't know this history we talking about the white man. We was in China for 608 years. Read. By this point, Chinese perceptions of Kunlun became more co complex. These perceptions ranged from strong and mysterious to frightening. They were scared to death of us. Read on. The Kunlun in the Tang Dynasty era were portrayed in numerous stories of the period as heroic. Mm -hmm. resourceful, and ironically culturally Chinese. Read. Most Chinese during this period, however, unless they were very wealthy, had little contact with African slaves, uh -huh. perhaps explaining the differing views of Kunlun. Go down, read on. During the Song, during the Song Dynasty, the numbers of African slaves increased China. Excuse me, can we... 
Mm-hmm. Go ahead. During the Song Dynasty, the numbers of African slaves increased in China. Most came from Madagascar and the Comoros Islands, and thus indirectly from Africa, since the Arabs brought sub-Saharan Africans to both areas. Most Kunlun slaves in China lived in Canton province. By this time, they were mostly viewed as displaced as a displaced people who lacked the ability to adapt to the Chinese environment. So they saying that we were, we were stupid. We wasn't able to adapt to the Chinese way of life. Go ahead. They were also described as savages. What was we described as? As savages. As savages? Read. With unintelligible speech. And our speech was, was foolish. Look, 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 they can't even understand Chinese. They speak in that stupid language. Read. While the Kunlun slaves were dehumanized. They were what? Dehumanized. They were dehumanized. As savage and scary. Stop. All right, that's it. So this is what the Chinese, how the Chinese looked at us while we was in slavery for over 600 years in China. And our people know nothing about this history. Go to um, Matthew 24. Hey, by the way, the, the word Kunlun only means black. That's all it's saying. So every time they, they say that, it's only saying black slave. All oh, praise. Go to Matthew 24, verse 6. So don't be afraid now that we see this coronavirus popped off. Oh, this is judgment from God. God not playing. God did not forget what these people done to us. Y'all understand that? God did not forget what these people done unto us. Read that, Matthew 24, verse 6. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. What? See that ye be not troubled. This is Christ telling us, listen, don't be troubled. Read. For all these things must come to pass. These things must come to pass. Just like we read in Isaiah 34, verse 16. No prophecy shall fail. These things must come to pass. Read on. But the end is not yet. But the end is not yet. Read. For nations shall rise against nations. Nations shall rise against nations. We starting to see that. Read. And kingdom against kingdom. Uh Uh-huh. And there shall be famines. There shall be famines. And pestilences. And who? And pestilences. And what? And earthquakes. And hold on. And pestilence. And pestilence. And earthquakes. Read. And earthquakes. Uh In diverse places. In diverse places. Read. And these are the beginnings Read of that sorrow. Again. And these Read that again. For nations shall rise against nations. Verse 8. All these are the beginning of sorrow. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So don't get scared now. This is just the beginning. God finna, he finna crank this thing up, y'all. Don't be afraid. These things must happen. This is just the beginning of sorrows. We got to have faith in the Lord. Go to 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. We got to have faith in the Lord. God going to destroy these people. But we got to have faith in him. Read that. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. So sh- it says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. So he got his angels going to and fro throughout the whole earth. Read. To show himself strong. To do what? To show himself strong. To show himself strong. Read. In the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So if you're keeping the commandments, you have nothing to worry about. Nothing. Read that again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong. So he's looking for brothers and sisters that's keeping the commandments so that he can show himself strong. You know how much strength it it, is show that um, you got all these other nations dying from this corona, but ain't none of us getting touched? Do you know the strength that's showing? Why these niggas ain't getting touched? They savages. They they, um, They ain't intelligent. How they, how they walking around and, and they cool? They going in the store, they going, they ain't even scared, they ain't running around scared. That's power, that's what God is looking for in the earth. Read that again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth 
to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So if you keep in the commandments, your heart is perfect towards God. He's, he's looking to save you. That gives it, he, that gives it, that, that's like him saying, I'm going to take care of my kids. Don't believe me, just watch. And then as you keeping the commandments, you going out, you, you living your life, you doing your thing, and people dropping dead around you. But he's showing his strength, just like he did with Pharaoh in Egypt. We had light, and they, and, and they had darkness. How they cattle died, but our cattle was living. This the same God. Read. Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. So stop. Now go to the next video. Um, the coronavirus Wuhan sealed off. So God is fighting for us, y'all. These people had us enslaved for over 600 and something years. Now God is going to jack their behinds up. So this is in Wuhan, China. This is a province of China. This is the epicenter of where the coronavirus started. Go ahead, play. Stop. It says life for people in China's Wuhan city has been turned upside down. Go ahead. Look at, look at the four bikes. Scared to death. Stop. The government sealed it off on January 23rd in a bid to contain the coronavirus outbreak. Go ahead. Chinese scared to death. Stop. This local hospital was overwhelmed by concerned Moabites. People scared to death. Go ahead. So this is a market. This is the market. It's a scrambling for supplies. Wuhan's residents cleared out markets. They bought every damn thing. Them people were scared. Go ahead. And these the same more bikes. They had a picture of us. Um, had a picture of us going in a in a in a washing machine and washing us to look like them. It's a Turkish woman resident in the city filmed these empty food stalls. Go ahead. Everybody got on masks. So we better not be afraid. We got a God on our side. These people ain't got no God. Go ahead. You, you go ahead. Ain't no apples, no pears, no nothing. So this was a thriving city, y'all. A thriving city. Ghost town. And what they're trying to say, they're trying to tell our people that um, we got to shave our beards or we're going to get the They say these foreign students were among the estimated 11 million people told not to leave. So you got to let, this is a thriving province. 11 million people could not leave. Read. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> So yeah, they're going to feel the wrath of God. Since Wuhan's travel ban, at least 12 other cities in the Hubei province have been sealed off. Go ahead. Stop. Across China, the coronavirus has killed 26 people and infected 800 more. Now this was January um, 20th of this year. So it's done spread now. That number is way higher now. Now it has went worldwide. Read. I mean, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tangannya. So you see, God is finna jack up the Moabites for what they done us. Go to Second Ezra, chapter fifteen. So we see that God has sent a pestilence or a, a plague to this place. And uh, <clears throat> just to show you something heavy, because we talking about Officer Caleb bringing out how it's not affecting people in the truth. When you look at even Jake in the world, I ain't heard of one, the one black person I heard that got it in the media got over it in a week. In a week. And he ain't even keeping the commandments. That's how you know this is of the Lord. He's showing the world like, yeah, they might, the ones that ain't repenting might be in darkness, but these are still my kids too. I'm working on you nations right now. That's why I've been watching. I've been paying attention to this thing in the media. This thing heavy. This is straight from the Lord. Straight up. All praises. Start at verse 46, 15, 46. Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 46. And thou Asia. Thou who? Asia. Asia, read. That art partaker of the hope of Babylon. The Babylon in this verse is the United States of America. Babylon the Great. The reason we know it's talking about that because this is the book of Esdras. This is after the Babylonian captivity. So that's how we know this is talking about Babylon the Great. You know what? Go to Psalms 137, just in case somebody like, nah, that ain't what it's talking about. <laughs> Go to um, Psalms 137. Psalms 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon. What? O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. Read. Who ought to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Read that one more time. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. No, go to the verse before that. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. In the, the children of Edom. Who is Edom? The so-called white man. Read. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, uh -huh. even to the foundation thereof. Uh -huh. O daughter of Babylon. What did it call Edom? The o daughter of Babylon. The daughter of Babylon. So now let's go back to 2nd Ezra. Just had to prove that Babylon is talking about Esau. 2nd Ezra, verse. chapter 15, verse 46. Read. And thou, Asia, that art partaker of the hope of Babylon, and art the glory of her person. Woe be unto thee. What did God just say? Woe be unto thee. Destruction be unto thee. Read. Thou wretch. Thou what? Thou wretch. You wretch. Read. Because thou hast made thyself like unto her. Because you have made yourself like unto Babylon. You always trying to copy the white man. Read. And has decked thy daughters in whoredom, uh -huh. that they might please and glory in thy lovers. Read. Which have always desired to commit whoredom with thee. Read. Thou hast followed her that is hated in all her works. So it's telling you that the Asian people are always following after Edomites. Read. And inventions. Therefore saith God. Therefore saith God. Since you want to be like the Edomites, since you want to put my, my people in captivity, therefore saith God. Read. I will send plagues upon thee. What did he say? I will send plagues upon thee. I will send plagues upon you so that 11 million of your people cannot leave. I'm going to send plagues upon you. Read. Widowhood. Widowhood. People are going to die. Mothers, I mean, women are going to lose their husbands. Read. Poverty. Uh-huh. Famine. Famine. Sword. Sword. And pestilence. And what? And pestilence. Uh-huh. To waste thy houses. To waste thy houses. With destruction and death. With what? Destruction and death. God said he's going to kill them. What is he using? This virus. Read it again. I will send plagues upon thee. Uh-huh. Widowhood, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence. To waste thy houses with destruction and death. So if God said he's going to do this to Asia and we keeping his commandments, why the hell are we scared? 
We're supposed to be cheering. We're supposed to be happy. This is how we shine. This is how we shine. Look what our God doing. This is how you had, you had us in slavery. You, we built your great wall of China. We did that. But you ain't got it in the history books. Don't nobody know. Because you consulted with the Edomites to hide it from us. But God know. So God like, okay, I'm going to start waking them up. When I start waking them up and they're going out and they're teaching, the angel's going to be activated. And then I'm going to start sending plagues. So that this Bible can be fulfilled. And that's what's happening in this earth. Go to 2 Ezra 15 and 1. 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. Read. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of the prophe of that's, prophecy. That's what's happening right now. You are the people of God. You're hearing the words of prophecy as we speak. Read. Which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. Uh-huh. And cause them to be written in paper. And cause the prophecies to be written in paper. We're reading it. We're reading it. Read. For they are faithful and true. The same thing we read in Isaiah 34. They must come to pass. No, no one of these shall fail. They are faithful and true. So what God said he's going to do to Asia, he's going to do it. Read. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredu incredulity. Let Thank you. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So those that don't want to hear this Bible, to hell with you. You're going to die. It is what it is. We're we here to gather a certain amount. We're getting the hell out of here. If you ain't a part of that certain amount, it is what it is. We didn't make you. God made you. So obviously God don't want you. And we ain't going to shed no tears. Read. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So that even goes to us. If you're not faithful. You're going to die being unfaithful. So you could be up in here sitting around, oh, I can't keep this happening. But you ain't got no faith in the Lord. You scared to death. And then you get hit. Oh, okay. I'm doing it right. I'm doing right. But you ain't got no faith. All the faithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Read. Behold, saith the Lord. I will bring plagues upon the world. What did God just say? I will bring plagues upon the world. I'm going to bring plagues upon the world. Read. The sword. Uh-huh. Famine. Uh-huh. Death and destruction. Read. For wickedness. For wickedness. Hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Uh-huh. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, saith the Lord. Stop. Give me this next video. Go to um, Epidolemus predicts effects of coronavirus. Yeah, I texted to him. Yeah, I already texted to him. Yeah, I texted to him. You see it? It's a epid... You got it? I'll praise him. Start that. Read that again. Read that verse again. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. He said, I will, bring, I will bring plagues upon the world. Read. The sword. The sword. Famine. Famine. Death. Death. And destruction. And destruction. Let me get that video, please. This is the God that we serve. This is our Father. So we better not be afraid. God is doing this on our behalf. Press play. Virus death toll now tops 3,000 with nearly 90,000 cases. But Stop. even those numbers are Remember what we just read, what was going on in China? It wasn't that many people dead in January. Start that over from the top. Worldwide, the coronavirus death toll now tops 3,000. It said nearly... worldwide. Read that verse again, please. Verse 5. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 5. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. I will bring plagues upon the world. Go ahead, press play. 
90,000 cases. But even those numbers are nothing compared to what could happen in the months ahead. Today, CBS News' Jim Axelrod spoke with one of this country's top experts from Harvard on viruses who has a startling prediction. The number that I think is grabbing a lot of people is this estimate. 40 to 70 percent of the world's adult population could be infected. Stop! Yes. At Did you hear what that devil just said? You tell me God ain't working on our behalf. I'm killing everybody for what they did to my people. Oh, we're going to read it. Some of y'all go, oh, 40 to 70, that's me. We're going to read it. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> read. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Press play. Accurate? That is, uh, it's a projection, so we will find out if it's accurate as things go on. It is a best estimate uh, that I've been able to make based on uh, a combination of the mathematical models that we use to track and predict epidemics. So in terms of addressing the numbers that may get people panicked, what can you tell us? Well, so this devil uh, said, listen, again, man. The, the 40 to 70 the percent tell me is what's up. a number infect a proportion of the population adult population infected. And we know that some people who get this infection have no or almost no symptoms whatsoever. What we don't know is how many there are like that. So if, say, that's half the people, then the, the 1 percent or 2 percent that we're seeing in the symptomatic people is cut down by half. Um, whatever the number is, it's going to be, it's going to take a toll. If it really does spread as widely as that projection says, and that's what I think is likely to happen, then there are going to be millions of people dying. And stop. I don't th think there's... Stop a it, stop it. Millions of people dying. He said, from based on our predictions, there shall be millions of people dying. That's it. That's it in that video. Go to Revel I mean, go back to Second Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse five. Start at verse six. Verse six: For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. So wickedness has polluted this earth. Read. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Read. Therefore saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness. Stop. Remember in Psalms eighty-three, he said, "Keep not thy silence, O Lord." God said, "Okay, I'm gonna start talking, and things gonna start dying." Read. Which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things, in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. The innocent and the righteous blood crieth unto God. Read. And the souls of the just complain continually. And the souls of the just, we the just, we complain continually when we go out there and see our people getting shot down. And nothing's happening. Everything that's happening to our brothers and sisters that's in the world. Read that, part, read that last part again. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me. Read. And the souls of the just complain continually. So we complain continually in our prayers. Lord, we got to get out of this captivity. You got homosexuals running rampant. Dwayne Wade done lost his mind. Done lost his mind. But they pushing that because he's a celebrity. Jake going, oh, you know what? Dwayne Wade did it. Dwayne Wade, hey, you know, they, the, the motive is to have our people to start doing that because they know who we are. Read that again. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them. God said he what? I will surely avenge them. God said he's going to avenge us. Go to Luke 18. God said he's going to avenge us. But in order for him to avenge us, you got to open your mouth and say something. Start at verse 1. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So, uh, you, you're supposed to be talking to God, read. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. So Christ is given an analogy or a parable, read. And there was a widow in that city. The widow she, is Israel, the judge is God, read. And she came unto him saying, 
Avenge me of mine adversaries. So the widow, which is Israel, is saying, avenge me of my adversary. We was enslaved to these people for over 600 years and we didn't know it. We was enslaved to the Ishmaelites who sold us to them. We was enslaved to the white man where we still at today. Avenge me, God. Read. And he would not for a while. And he would not for a while. Why? Because we got to live out the curses of this Bible. We deserve what we got. Read. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me. But because the children of Israel keep praying for us to avenge them, read. I will avenge her. I will what? I will avenge her. God said, I will avenge her. Meaning what? We as a nation of people supposed to be praying for the destruction. The hell we scared for when God sending plagues to these people. We running around the earth scared. Do we not believe in God? That's what you got to ask yourself. Do I believe this book? Read. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Uh-huh. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust saith. Read. And shall not God avenge his own elect? Shall not God avenge us? Read. Which cry day and night unto him. Which do what? Which cry day and night unto him. Go back to Luke 18 and 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So you should be praying day and night for the destruction of this place, for the destruction of um, the, the, the Chinese or the Moabites, for the destruction of the Edomites, for the destruction of the Ishmaelites. You're supposed to be praying for that. And then when God go to killing them, you notice, okay, God is, he's working. He's working. But we run around, half of us ain't praying for the destruction. Then when God started killing, we, oh my God, what is he doing? They dying, why, why, why are people dying? But if you praying for the destruction, you clapping all praises. God is avenging us. That's why ain't none of us got the damn virus. He ain't, he ain't killing us. It's their time to get it for what they done to us, and we don't even know it. Our people don't even know what happened to us. Running around here just talking about the white man. The Chinese did it too. Read. And shall not, verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and Go night. Go to Revelation 6. Start at verse 9. For y'all that don't know, we're in the fifth seal. Read. Revelation chapter 6, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, that thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So, right now you got spirits that have already gone to the Lord that is crying for the destruction of what had happened to them. Read on, though. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. God said, hold on, it's okay, go ahead, read. Until their fellow servants also and their brethren that shall be killed as that they were. That's what? That shall be killed as they were. Should, should be fulfilled. Meaning what? Some of us got to do what? Die. Has that start happening yet? That's got to happen. Mm. But in the meantime... We should be praying for what? The destruction of this place. If you ain't doing that, go to Revelation 8. Mm. Start at verse 3. Revelation chapter 8, verse 3. And another angel came and stood on the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints. That upon he the should offer it with the prayers of all the saints. Who are the saints? The Israelites. Read. Of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne, and the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Uh-huh. And the angel that took... That angel is Raphael when you read Tobit 12 and 15. Read. And the angel took the censer and filled it with the filled it with fire of what the altar. What was in the censer? The prayers of the Israelites. Read. And cast it into the earth. And cast their prayers into the earth. Read. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and earthquakes. And what? 
and an earthquake. What do we read in Matthew 24? That there must be earthquakes in diverse places. So when you're praying for the destruction of your enemies, what's happening? You see, you start seeing earthquakes. You start seeing pestilence. You start seeing death of your enemies. That means what? God is answering your prayers. But if you ain't praying that, you lost. Oh, what's going on in the earth? We warriors. We're not regular men in this earth. We the warriors of God. God brought us back to bring the destruction. We're not here to play with the people on this earth. We're here on a mission to gather our brothers and the sisters that come. Picture real quick. Get um, uh, Ezekiel twenty-eight and eight. Bring it out because that's exactly what we're here to do, especially as men. And I just want you guys to realize, whenever you're saying the Lord's prayer, you're praying for the destruction of your enemies, whether you realize it or not. And when you keep in these commandments, prayers do get answered. So what Officer Caleb is going over is heavy. Don't ask for something and then be afraid when it comes to pass. That's right. Don't ask for your enemies to be destroyed and the captivity to turn. And then when the stuff starts to happen, you're scared. You're walking around with fear. That's because you don't believe the words that you're, that you're reading. That's right. You don't even believe what you're saying. Because if you did, there would be no fear about the coronavirus. I laugh every day I get up when I hear about it. I love it. I don't, I don't make sta hey, uh, the corona traffic. There's corona traffic. Roads is clear getting to Seattle. I'm all praises. I'm tired of sitting in traffic. Go home. Be scared. I'm out. I'm out. Go. I'm going to run my business as regular. That's right. Corona traffic. Read that. <laughs> Ezekiel right. chapter 28, verse 8. Come on. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death. Jeremiah 28, 28. My bad. 28 and 8. 28 and 8. Come on, he's doing a good class, man. This Jeremiah is... chapter 28, verse 8. Come on. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries. You see that? Our forefathers prophesied against many countries. That's what we're doing today. Prophesying against many countries. Activating the angels. Come on. And against great kingdoms of war. Uh-huh. Of war and of evil. Uh-huh. Of war and of evil. Come on. And of pestilence. And of what? And of pestilence. And of what? And of pestilence. Whenever we go out on these streets, we pray, for, we cry aloud for that thing. That the Most High bring those judgments upon this earth for what they've done to us and continue to do to us. The witchcraft that they pull upon our people that got them believing a lie. So when you pray, pray for pestilence. Pray for destruction. Pray for earthquakes. My wife will tell you, every morning we pray, I'm praying for the destruction of this place, our enemies. Because that's what we got to pray for. Let's make the angels activate. Let's get the hell up out of here. And don't be scared when he starts to deliver you. It has to happen. Christ warned us about that. So if you believe this Bible, when you wake up and you see earthquakes, pestilences, people getting put to death in the middle of wars between countries, that ain't our fight. That's the most high fighting for us. That's the most high making them fight each other. And you should be giving all praises to the Lord for that thing, not walking around fearful. Because when you walk around fearful, what you're, not, what you're telling God is, don't destroy my enemies. I want to stay in slavery. Damn. Hey, get, uh, get Swag wow. 18 real oh, quick. Guess who 18 and 7. Sirach chapter 18, verse 7. When a man hath when a man hath done, when he beginneth, and when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. 18 and 7? Yes, sir. No, wisdom of Solomon, my bad. Wisdom of Solomon, 18 and 7. Because you if you're hearing what the officer is bringing out, right, you have to get your mind right. You have to get your mind right. It's time to get your mind out of America and build and put your mind back in the laws of God, the things that we're supposed to be doing. Read what you got. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18, verse 7. So of thy people was accepted both of the salvation of the righteous. So in us being here, you have, you have to accept the destruction that's coming. You have to accept the salvation. We all want salvation, right? But there's no salvation without destruction. There's no freedom without people getting put to death. That's, that's the type of, uh, that's where we're at right now. Because now we're learning who we are, we're waking up. We have to accept that thing. Read it again. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous uh -huh. and destruction of the enemies. So, and you're, you getting saved, you're, you keeping the laws, being righteous, getting saved, you have to accept the destruction of our enemies. It's, it's, it's one package. Go to Jeremiah 48 and 28. Sorry, 
Start verse 20. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 20. Moab is confounded, for it is broken down. Because, Mo like the officer read earlier, Moab is a prideful nation. You see how they walk around us when we go to their stores, and when, whenever we go to their, their shop. They're quick to make, you, make sure you buy so you can get the hell out. Prideful as hell. Can hardly see anything, but prideful as hell. Read what you got. Moab is confounded, for it is broken down. Howl and cry. The most I said Moab is confounded and, and is broken down. Right? Read on. Howl and cry. Uh-huh. Tell, tell, tell ye it in Arnon that Moab is spoiled. Uh -huh. And judgment is come upon the plain country. Right, because Moab is judgment of the Mosiah is coming upon Moab as we speak. Go on. Upon Halon and upon Jehaza. Uh huh. And upon Metha. And upon and upon Nabal. Going unto all the cities of Moab. Read on. And uh, skip the verse uh, 24. And upon Kerith and upon Basra and upon all the cities of the land of Moab. So. All the plagues that's going on right now is going on all the cities of Moab. Read on. Far or near. What? Far or near. So whether they're in China or they're in America, regardless of where they're at, the, that plague is going out. Read on. The horn of Moab is cut off. Uh-huh. And his arm is broken down. Uh -huh. And his arm is broken, saith Be the Lord. Because their pride, the pride that they have, the most are going to cut it off. The most are going to bring them down to the lowest state, that the, the, the place that the, where they're supposed to be at. Read on. Make, he, make ye him drunken, for he magnified himself against the Lord. Guess what? And that's what they did when we read Psalms 83. More of, and, and, and the Arabs, they magnified themselves against the Lord. How? By taking God's people. By, by uh, um, abusing God's people. Read on. Oab also shall wallow in his vomit. They should do what? Wallow in his vomit. Right, because God is bringing them down to the lowest estate. Read on. And he also shall be in derision. Uh-huh. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Hey, get that, get that word for me real quick. Because that's a question being posed. Was not Israel in derision unto Moab himself? We were. We're still, we're still going to the, uh, uh, the, the derision that Moabs have on our people. As we go to their shop, as we go around them, and whenever they see us coming, oh, like, watch them. They, they walk all around you while you're in the store shopping. Mind, mind you, you're trying to spend your own money with them. Read that. Derision, contentious ridicule, or mockery. They, they constantly doing that to us. Now, now go, you get that video I told you to get real quick? It's gonna be, I'm just going to skip through it. So, mind you, they, 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 they make fun of us. They say we're nothing. They say we, uh, we're slave, we let, we're black, we all these things, right? And they're still doing it. But let's see how the Most High move. You got the video? That's the video? Yeah, take it out. All right, just all right. Put it, take it out. Obviously, also already got it. No, that's that's not the video I sent you. Is that the one? All right, play it real quick. Let me see what if that's the right video. Yeah, that's not the one I asked you to bring. All right, but finish the scripture. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 27. For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among thieves? For since thou spakest of him, thou skiptest for joy. Right. And that's what they've they been doing for years. And now the Most High is turning the table around and making sure that we, we, their destruction is coming. All right, go ahead, officer. Yeah, I'll praise to the Most High. So we definitely know what's going on with Moab. All right. Go to Second um, Ezra chapter fifteen. Start at verse ten. Hey, all praise to the Most High, man. So Moab, you gonna get it? Now let's go into America. 
Read verse 10. Second Ezra, chapter 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. To dwell in the land of Egypt. Go to Revelation 11 and 8. Let's see what Egypt is talking about. So God said he would not suffer us to dwell in the land of Egypt. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. Read. And, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, uh -huh. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called what? Sodom and Egypt. Uh-huh. Where also our Lord was crucified. Because that's why you got the white image of Christ here, where the Lord was crucified. They crucified his image. Read that one more time. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, uh -huh. where, our, where also our Lord was crucified. So it's spiritually called Egypt. Now go back to 2nd Esdras. 2nd Esdras. 2nd Esdras, chapter 15, verse 11. But I will bring them in, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues. He will smite America with what? Plagues. With plagues. Read. As before. As what? As before. This let you know it's not talking about ancient Egypt. Because he said, I'm going to smite them as I did ancient Egypt. That's what's happening in the earth. Read. And will destroy all the land thereof. Uh-huh. Egypt shall mourn. Egypt shall what? Shall mourn. Uh-huh. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and the punishment that God shall bring upon it. So God is going to do what? He's going to plague America too. Which is who? Esau. Or spiritual Egypt. But remember the hit list of God. The first countries that he named. Edom. Ishmael. Moab. All of them going to get it. Go to first. Go to second. Uh, jump to verse 20. Behold, saith God. I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, uh -huh. which are from the rising of the sun. Which from the east, read. From the south, from the east, and Lebanus, to turn themselves one against another, and repay the things that they have done to them. And repay the things that, have, that they have done to them. The them is us. So God is going to call all the people together to fight for what they've done to us. Read. Like as they do yet this day. Until my chosen. Like as they do yet this day until my chosen. Who is the chosen? We are. Read. So will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God. Read. My right hand shall not spare the sinners. My right hand, which is Christ, shall not what? Spare the sinners. Uh-huh. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Read. The fire is gone forth from his wrath. And has consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners. And the sinners. The sinners is you Israelites that is not keeping the commandments. You're breaking God's law. You a sinner. Read that again. So if, you, if, you, if you're in the midst of sin, yeah, you better be scared of, of the coronavirus. Read. The fire has gone forth from his wrath and has consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners. Like the straw that is kindled. Like the what? Like the straw that so is the, kindled. So the sinners of our people are like straw to the fire. So your lot is to keep the fire burning. That's why you was made. Just to keep the fire burning. So you need to check your spirit. Read. Woe to them that sin. Woe to them that break God's commandments. Oh, he tell you. My bad. Go ahead. Read on. And keep not my commandments, saith the Lord. Read. I will not spare them. I will not spare you. Yeah, you my people, but I'm going to kill you too. Read. Go your way, ye children from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. Uh -huh. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. He it. said, defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all of them that sin against him. Read. And therefore delivereth, delivereth he them unto death and destruction. He got destruction waiting for you. He's going to deliver you to it. Read on. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. What did he say? For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Uh-huh. And ye shall remain in them. Uh-huh. For God shall not deliver you. So when the, when the plagues come to the earth, God said, I'm not going to deliver you. Why? Because you're sinning against me. So just because you Israel don't mean you're going to make it. You better be keeping these commandments. If you ain't keeping these commandments, you're going you to catch, catch corona and die. 
so that you can be that straw that you was made to be. Read. For God shall not deliver you because you have sinned against him. God not going to deliver you because you sinned against him. Go to Sirach 7 and 1. So don't be afraid, man. Keep the commandments. Christ said, if you're keeping the commandments, I'm going to deliver you. The plagues that's going to come to this earth, you don't have to worry about them. Read that. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 1. Do no evil. What did he say? Do no evil. If you ain't, if you ain't doing evil, go ahead. So shall, no harm, so shall no harm come unto thee. If you ain't doing evil, you ain't got to worry about no plague. Read that again. Do no evil. So shall no harm come unto thee. Go to Psalm 62 and 8. So you keep the commandments. Don't be doing evil. Don't be doing secret sins. And you ain't got to worry about catching corona. Psalm chapter 62, verse 8. Trust in him at all times. What the Bible just say? Trust in him at all times. Uh-huh. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. God is a refuge for the Moabites. God is a refuge for us. For the Edomites. God is a refuge for us. The Bible say God is a refuge for us. Read it again from the top. What did he say? Trust in him at all times. Trust in him at all times. You going out handling your business? Trust in the Lord. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. So then when you get home, pray. Before you go out, pray to the Lord. Lord, protect me. Watch over me. Watch over my family. Watch over the body. Watch over the brothers and sisters that may be weak in faith. Send your angels to encamp around them. Read. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Go to 2 Andrew 16. So don't be afraid. Just sit back and watch. Pop some popcorn. Mm -mm. Make sure it ain't the Sabbath. Because brother, like, he told me to pop some popcorn. <laughs> Make sure it ain't the Sabbath. Pop you some popcorn. Watch the news and keep the commandments. Verse 35, 1635. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 35. Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. So listen to what I'm telling you and understand what I'm saying. Read. Behold the word of the Lord. Receive listen to it. the word of God. What? Receive it. Receive it. Understand it. Take heed to it. Read. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Uh-huh. Behold, the plagues draw nigh. Behold, the plagues are already here. Read. And are not lack. They are not, and are slack. not slack. Meaning it's going to be more to come. So don't be afraid. Study the scriptures. Be amongst your brothers and sisters. And God got you. Go to Deuteronomy 7. He got us. Deuteronomy 7, start at verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God which keep covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Read. And repay of them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hated him. He ain't going to be slack to them that hated him. Why? Because he's going to send plagues. Read. He will repay him to his face. Uh-huh. Thou shalt, thou shalt therefore keep the commandments. So if you don't want the plagues, you should do what? Read that again. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Read. And the statutes and the judgments, which I command thee this day. Read to, on. To do them. Uh-huh. Wherefore it shall come to pass, if ye hearken to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord thy God shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Read. And he will love thee. He's going to love you. Read. And bless thee. He's going to bless you. Read. And multiply thee. And multiply thee. Meaning you're going to have uh, children. Read. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb. He will bless the fruit of thy womb. Meaning you women that probably ain't had a baby. Oh, I can't have children. Boom. Now you got a baby up in you. Read on. And the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, and thine oil, the increase of thy kind. And the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Read. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Read. And, and the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. What the Bible just say? And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Read. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt. And will do what? And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt. That is a promise God gave us. Why the hell is we scared? 
He promised you that. Read it again. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. He going to lay them upon the, Edom, the Edomites. He going to lay the plagues upon the Moabites. He going to lay the plagues upon the Ammonites, the Ishmaelites. All the other nations, he going to lay these plagues upon them. In, in what is it, Iran? One of they one of they top people just got coronavirus and got and killed. He died. He trying to tell the people that it ain't bad and then he end up dying. God is not playing. Give me Revelation to give me um, Nahum one. Verse two. We almost done. Nahum one and two. Got seven seconds. Nahum chapter one, verse two. All praise. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth. So we ain't gotta do. We ain't gotta get vengeance on the on the on the on the Chinese. We ain't gotta get vengeance on the white man. Say the Lord revengeth. Read. And is furious. The Lord will take vengeance of his adversaries. So it says the Lord will take vengeance of his adversaries. Read. And he reserveth wrath for his enemies. And he do what? Reserveth wrath for his enemies. He reserved wrath for his enemies. Who is his enemies? Psalms chapter 83, the other nations, the nations that put his people in captivity. Those are his enemies. So it said that we ain't got to do the revenge. He's going to do the vengeance. It said he reserved wrath for them. Let's see some of the wrath. Go to Sirach chapter 39, verse 23. Let's see some of the wrath that God got reserved. Sirach chapter 39, verse 23. Read. As he hath turned the waters into saltness, unto saltness, so shall the heathen inherit his wrath. So shall the heathen in inherit his wrath. Read. As his ways are plain unto the holy, so are they stumbling blocks unto the wicked. Uh -huh. for, the good are, for the good are good things created from the beginning. So evil things for sinners. The principal things for, whole, for the whole use man, of man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape. And oil. So and he's clothing. telling you, listen, sit back, make sure you got these things. That's the chief things in life. That's what you need. Right? Read on. All these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. Read the next verse, though. There be spirits that are created for vengeance. Hold up. Then he turned around and said, there are spirits that are created for what? Vengeance. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So he said, I created spirits just for vengeance. Read. Which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force. So when it's time for the spirits to get down, they get down. Read. And appease the wrath of him that made them. And appease God who made the spirit. Read. Fire and hell. Fire and hell is a what? Is a spirit. Read. And famine. And famine. And death. And death. All these were created for vengeance. For what? were created for vengeance. So when you see the other nations die, that's the spirit of God that he's using for vengeance. That's why he told us in Nahum, man, listen, vengeance is mine. I'm going to send plagues. And when I send the plagues, the people are going to die. And I'm going to put the words in the mouth of the prophets to come and tell you so that you don't get scared. That's what's happening right now. Go to um, 1 Thessalonians 3, verse 8. So don't be afraid. Handle your business. We protected, y'all. We straight. Sit back, watch the show. Go ahead. 1 Thessalonians eight. chapter 3, verse 8. For now we live, if ye stand fast in the Lord. If you stand fast in the Lord, we good. We gonna live. Give me first, 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. That's not of God. Read. But of power. God gave us the spirit of power. Read that one more time. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. Okay, well, I'm not scared. But I don't really know what fear is. What is fear? Go to Wisdom of Solomon, 17, 12. So it said God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 12. Read. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors 
which reason offer. So he basically telling you what fear is, is when you don't have faith. <laughs> if you don't have faith, you're going to what? Fear. That's basically what he's saying. In a nutshell. So now, let me show you something else. Give me about Christ. Go to Matthew 4. Because what's going to happen? Two minutes. All right. Last scripture. Go to Exodus 15, 26. I'll pray. This last scripture. Last scripture. Exodus 15, 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. and will do that which is right in his sight. If you keep the commandments, read. And will give ear to his commandments, uh -huh. and give all his statutes, and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. If we keep the commandments, you ain't got to worry about coronavirus. God just said he would not put these plagues, these diseases on you. Read. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Read. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. So don't be afraid, brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. The Lord is our help. You understand? Um, with that, shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.